do you like learning more about the Splatoon 3 characters? Well, all of this information is fake, but it sure is fun. Here are some not so real facts about every character from Splatoon 3, and 2, and 1. During the events of Return of the Mammalians, it's rumored Captain 3 was committed to getting three of her eight hours of sleep a day just sitting on that box. Ironically, Agent 4's worst game mode is Rainmaker. You'd think that wouldn't be so with how handily they defeated DJ Octavio, but all that rail riding was nerve wracking. What if they missed the landing and just fell? Oh god. The first time Agent 8 learned about the Splatlands top-of-the-line pool functionality, she immediately thought they were adding pool as a game alongside table turf. That's what a few too many 8-ball levels will do to you. Hunting for trash has its downsides. If you ever see a cephalopod rummaging through the trash in Splatsville, um, it, 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 might, be, it might be Agent 3. Don't worry about it. She's just looking for more stuff to sell. It's cool. Ever since Splatfest's moved to the ever chaotic Splatlands, Callie has been trying to dump glitter into the special Splatfest ink. She hasn't succeeded yet. Marie secretly hoped winning the Splatfest would take her from Agent 2 status all the way up to Agent 1, but that title still belongs to Callie. Cuttlefish had a very important job before the events of After Alterna, defending Marie's Brella. At least three teenage cephalopods try to steal Marie's Brella every week, claiming it might have some new technology to make Brella a meta weapon, whatever that means. Sometimes, when Pearl gets home from work, she yells, I'm home, in the loudest voice possible. So, uh, it's good she's rich? She breaks the door a lot? <laughs> Marina hides her future song manuscripts underneath a flutter, so anyone who dares to try and steal them gets, uh, a very special surprise when they get too close. If there's one joke Shiver has gotten tired of, it's when anyone walks up to her and says, hey, they're a big fan of hers, while pointing to her fans. It's a good way to get a big fan to the face. Fry once tried tying balloons to herself with the help of that big old hole in her pants. It worked! Too well! <laughs> it said it took two days for Fry to get back to the Splatlands after that. If the word rhymes with man, Big Man's got a costume for it somewhere in the back. Big can! Big flan! Even slight stretches like big hand! <laughs> Surface-dwelling Octolings love to tinker with the left-behind junk and debris from DJ Octavio's previous zapfish stealing attempts. Unsurprisingly, uh, no one has been able to compete with an Octobot arm for a weapon yet, though. As one of the only Splatlandians to understand salmonid tongues, Little Buddy's conversations in Splatsville are usually translated by Agent 3. A lot of the translations are straight-up lies. Some other members of Sea Cucumber species have specialized names that help set them apart. A few of his favorites are CD Seller, BB Cure, and of course, RV Driver. Having an entire society highly value your existence can be exhausting. So that's why Judd sometimes will accidentally travel back to Inkopolis when nobody's looking. Do Inklings get upset when he's gone? Sure, but he's not. Inklings and Octolings who spend a little too much time in Splatsville have gotten into the habit of rubbing their tentacles against a lemon or a lime before walking past Little Judd. This lowers their chance of having him play with their tentacles. After discovering an old DVD, as the humans called it, of a show known as Yogi Bear, a few Inklings carefully placed Mr. Grizz's radio in a picnic basket, hoping for a reaction. A few weeks later, between a set of shifts, someone walked in to see that basket shredded and smashed in tiny pieces all around the room. Huh. Inklings have found out you can climb the Great Zapfish for about 7 to 10 seconds before you get zapped off. One game they like to play is to see who can climb the longest without getting shocked, like a very intense game of chicken. Last one on it wins! 
During his time on the surface, it's been said various daycares would call Isopadre at least five days a week trying to hire him, simply because he had Padre in his name. Agent 3 tried exposing Orca to rock music once, hoping the system would become a rocka. Sadly, Orca showed no interest in rocks, besides Moai. Sheldon originally moved to the Splatlands, thinking this would be the place where he could create any weapon loadout that he wanted. Squiffers with Inzukas, blasters with Booyah Bombs, splatter shots with Tenta Missiles. But again, no. Still gotta follow the ding-dang rules. Having full access to nearly any clothing from Inkopolis and the Splatlands alike has made Annie very popular, even if she's soft-spoken. But don't think she won't clobber you with merchandise if you happen to scare her. Annie once built Mo a maze out of spare shoes no one wanted to buy. It only worked if he stayed low to the ground, though. The closest Merch has gotten to committing a crime is when he threw an inkling through the lobby window. But there was a reason! They tried to use his hair as a back scratcher. At least ask first! Gnarly Eddie tried to become a yoga instructor in his early days, but his shell kept keeping him from his full potential. At least his tentacles could stretch real far! Nails' job with Gnarly Eddie started after he got tired of his previous job at the Shoal, where it would take him two hours to actually reach his customers when they needed help. Talk about bad business. Before working in the general store, Harmony tried a number of different hobbies to get herself accustomed with various hip inkling and octoling trends. She had a really big thing for tie-dye. Don't open the closet in the back room. For the first year of running Ammo Nights in Inkopolis, almost every inkling assumed that Shelly and Donnie were horseshoe crabs. <sighs> they got into the habit of starting their conversations with Erm, actually, with Tweops? <laughs> Trying to replace Fred Crumbs' specialty lemon with a lime makes him very, very, very mad. The last inkling that did this was only allowed to buy mismatched shoes for the next two weeks. The horror. One octoling experiment the Deep Sea Metro tried to forcibly dye the ooze on Tartar's head. It did not work, but it still made Tartar go into a sleep mode type state for like a week to make sure none of it stayed in his system. Uh. It's rumored that the staff fish who runs Table Turf the food shop in the lobby and the recon area in the plaza is one of, if not, the richest fish in all of Incadia. But we're not allowed to ask about her salary. Jelfonzo sometimes wears gear that you can't buy in Splatoon 2, especially to make cephalopods keep coming back for more clothes. After all, it must be available someday, right? R right? Krusty Sean has his food truck equipped with various booby traps to stop Inklings from raiding his truck for free food. However, all of his traps are made out of food that's selling poorly to try and inspire these Inklings to come back and buy them for real. Tricky business strategy. When Spike goes to any kind of concert, he's real careful not to do any headbanging. Have you ever poked concert goers in front of you and behind you basically at the same time? When business is slow, Flo loves to crochet tiny squids and octopi to sell his knickknacks. When Harmony's general store opened up, she started to supply them there directly as limited time stock. Inspired by human television choices, Craymond tried creating his own comedy known as That's So Craymond. It got two seasons, but it was canceled before the big twist where the clothes that don't sell well each season are secretly stored away in Jalonzo's back closet. He rips them into smaller pieces to sew back together and create tiny sweaters for the snail population that lives underneath his shop every drizzle season. Have you ever heard the term risk it for the biscuit? Well, Bisk takes that phrase very seriously. Living a secret double life in roller skating and similar sports. Getting all his energy out from hitting the half pipe is how he stays so chill at work. 
Although they couldn't use it in official turf war battles, a group of Octolings tried to build armor as large and strong as Mr. Coco appeared to be. It was a success. As long as the Octoling in question simply jumped inside, as it was too heavy to actually walk around in. Oops. Jellaflor has to hide from local magazine companies who try to mooch off his fashion trends for their next front page style. They could, you know, just ask and maybe pay him too? Jeez. And there you have it. You now know a little bit more, or a little bit less technically, about every single character in Splatoon. You're welcome. Bing, bang, bing. Ba, bing, bang, bing. Ba, 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 da, da, ba, da, bang. Ba, 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 da, da, ba, da, bang. Ba, ba, ba. Ba, 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 ba,